Hey guys, so I am so excited to finally be filming this video because I've been kind of preparing for this video for a while now and I've been so excited to share this with you guys. So I created my own custom palette using, or I guess I can show you the outside. I don't want to spoil the inside yet because you're going to get to see it all come together, but I created my own custom palette with the Lethal Cosmetics Build Your Own Palette feature on their website. And I had so much fun. So I'm gonna be showing you the whole process of putting the palette together, picking out the shades, and then I'll show you the final result. So Lethal Cosmetics did reach out to me and ask if I would like to try out their Build Your Own palette, and they did send me the palette in PR, and they asked if I would just share kind of my honest review with you guys. So today's video isn't sponsored, but I did receive the products in PR, and they also did give me an affiliate code. So if you are interested in trying any of their products for yourself, you can use the code Sarah Rose to get 20% off your order. I do make a small commission if you do use that code, so thank you in advance if you do. But I was so excited to finally try out their custom palette designer because I've heard, first of all, I've heard so many great things from other creators about Lethal Cosmetics. I've heard so many good things about their eyeshadow formula. And as you guys know, usually I'm not a magnetic single shadow kind of gal. I do have some magnetic singles in my collection and I like them and even if I love the formula a lot of the time I just I end up not using them because I don't feel like I have a cohesive color story or I don't know they just feel kind of random to me and I personally am just inspired more by pre-built pre-made palettes but I do love the idea that with with a custom built singles palette you can be sure that you actually want all of the shades in the palette. It's not like a pre-made palette that a, a brand put together and sold to you where you might only use half the shades or maybe you would use most of the shades but there's one or two shades that you don't really use that often or that you already have repeated over and over again in your collection. So I really like this idea of just designing your own palette with shades that you're actually gonna use. What I love about the Lethal Cosmetics palette designer is not only do they have regular magnetic palettes that you can build into, but they also have palettes with individual slots for their eyeshadow pans. So I love that because it feels like my own palette, like a real palette, not just like a Z palette with, with random magnetic singles in it. It feels like a palette that I curated. So I am so excited to show you what I came up with. For this palette, I went with a 12 pan, and what I was going for was not, I didn't want it to just be a fall palette or just, just a colorful palette or just a neutral palette. I wanted it to be something that I'm gonna feel inspired to reach into no matter the season. I wanted it to be a little bit colorful. I wanted kind of like muted colors, wearable colors, you know, colors that I'm gonna feel inclined to wear on a day-to-day -day basis. But I also wanted to have some neutrals and some shades that I could just throw on for a really quick everyday look. So that was kind of just the very general vision that I had in the back of my mind, but I really just wanted to just play around and see what I came up with. So let's go ahead and get into the palette designer portion. I'll share my screen with you so you can see how the palette all came together. And hopefully I'm not giving too much away, but I am wearing the palette on my eyes right now. So um, I did do two looks with it and I'll have demos for both of those at the end of this video, but let's go ahead and hop into the palette designer. So here we are on the palette designer page. So um, obviously the first step is to choose which magnetic palette you want. I ended up going with one of the 12 pans here. They also have some that are just an open rectangle and this way you could have, if you wanted like blushes and highlighters along with your shadows, you could fit like different sized pans in there. But for me, I really like the ones that have uh, like an individual space for each shadow because it just makes it feel more like a real palette in my head. <laughs> so I ended up going with the patchwork one. Now that we have our palette picked out, Next step is the fun part, which is to pick out the colors. So they have so many options here. I'm like kind of overwhelmed. They have quite a few multi-chromes, which of course the multi-chromes are more expensive than the regular shadows. Uh, most of the multi-chromes are $16.50 and then most of the regular shadows, the regular mattes and shimmers are usually six or $7. So keep that in mind as you're putting together your palette, you know, if you put together a palette full of multi-chromes, 
ooh, it's probably gonna get pretty pricey. So just keep that in mind. I'm probably gonna only pick one or two multi-chromes. I'm thinking two, let's pick two because I actually don't have any multi-chromes in my collection right now. So I just would like to try some, some multi-chromes. Man, Genesis looks so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the palette. You can just click it and it gets added in. Um, and then from here, you can move the shades around, you can delete them, there's like a little trash can down there. I do also want to show you can filter the colors out. So that, I mean, that's a pretty long list to scroll through. So if you were looking for like just cool tones, you could search by that. You can also search by finish, shift, and then price, availability, all of that. So what I want to do, I want to start by picking what multi-chromes I want and also what shimmers I want. So I am going to, I don't really care about the tones just yet, so I'm going to filter out matte and pearlescent and I'll leave in metallic and sparkly and I'll leave in duochrome. I think that should also include multi-chromes, I'm hoping. And yeah, so let's see what those options are. And of course some of these are out of stock, but I already put Genesis in Let's see. Ooh, Allure is pretty. This is a metallic finish. It shifts from champagne to green, gold to red. Um, and if you hover over the color, by the way, it pulls up this part where it gives you a description of it, the price, and you can tap through to see the swatch. A lot of these are out of stock. I'm actually, you can also filter out the ones that are out of stock, which I'll go ahead and do. Oh, Dark Matter. Whoa, it looks black. I wonder how it swatches. Okay, here's the thing. Some of the swatches on here, this is one complaint I have. Some of the swatches, at least on my computer, I don't know if this is supposed to be a video, but it's not showing me the swatch. So I end up having to like, actually open up a new tab and search for that. I really wanna see a swatch of this though. I probably won't want it just knowing me, but I, I just, I have to see what this looks like. Oh, there it goes. Ooh, okay, so it shifts to like a pure black and then the multi-chrome is kind of like a reddish orange. There's like a little purple in there too. Wow, okay, that's that would be an amazing color for like a Halloween spooky look. Um, but I know I would never wear that color. <laughs> like I know I'd wear it once a year, <laughs> so probably not worth it for me, but that does look really cool. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I am. I'm definitely looking for like light, colorful shimmers. Nothing too dark, nothing too bright, but just a little bit colorful. Um, evoke. So that's like a pink to blue mint. That sounds cute. Um, and then Genesis is described as gray, blue, green, pink, and gold, which I actually really like the way that sounds. Like, I love that it has gray to it. I feel like that gives it like a little bit of a moodiness. So I think this one is going to stay. Let's see what else we have. Here's Parsec. That's another one that looks really fun. This says it shifts from pink, gold, turquoise to lilac. Ooh. Okay, that is my kind of color. I do love kind of like a pink and gold shift. Kind of makes me think of rose gold, but like with a twist, you know? So I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put that one in too. Let's see if any of these other ones. Singularity also looks gorgeous. Multi-chrome with a sparkly metallic finish that's shift from lavender, blue, turquoise to gold. There it is. Ooh. Oh, that's pretty. Wow, that looks really fun. I see the pink, the green. There's like a grayish lavender to it. Hmm. Okay, I definitely want to add that in. I might take it out because I don't think I want to have three multi-chromes in here. Let's decide. Actually, let's look at a swatch of Parsec because I didn't look at that. Or I didn't look at the video swatch. Oh, that's really pretty too. I love that it has kind of a green to it. There's like a gold green shift and the base is pink. Okay, that's really pretty. <laughs> okay, I think I wanna get, I just can't stop looking at Genesis. This just looks so dreamy. It's got that like unicorn iridescence to it. So I think I think I need these two. So even though Singularity looks pretty, and maybe I'll purchase that one in the future, for now I am going to get rid of Singularity. So now that I have my multi-chromes picked out, as far as the shimmer to matte ratio, I definitely want more shimmers than mattes, but I'm not tied to a specific number. I think maybe like four, around four mattes, and then eight shimmers. That way I'd, basically I would have like 
two thirds of the palette would be shimmers, which I think would be ideal, but I'm not tied to that necessarily. So we'll see what happens, but I do want more shimmers than mattes. So let's select all the non-duochrome shades as well so that we can see what else we have. So this one caught my eye. Even though this looks like a little bit more basic, if you will, I think it still looks really pretty and dimensional. It's a rose gold with a metallic finish, and it's one of their $7 shades. And this just looks like the perfect rose gold for any look. And I do often like to wear a rose gold shimmer on my lid. It's one of my favorite just everyday shimmer shades to wear. So I kind of want to add that one in, even though it's so... I'm sure I have similar shades in my collection, but I also want to be able to reach into just this palette alone and get a few of my kind of signature everyday looks so that, you know, I could just take this with me if I'm traveling and I'd still be able to fall back on those basic shades. Yeah, there's not like a specific color story I have in mind. I'm just going to start adding in the colors that like really grab my attention and hopefully it'll all come together to be somewhat of a cohesive color story. I think it will. I think it will. So this one looks really pretty. Altitude Pastel Periwinkle with a matte finish. I do really like Periwinkle. I have a Periwinkle in my ColourPop Miss Bliss palette, but I feel like because that palette has such a specific color story and I don't really use it that much because it's only rare occasions that I'm going to wear that color story, it would be nice to have a Periwinkle within a palette with other colors that I know I will wear so that then I'll be more inclined to wear this color, which I love, when I have it alongside colors that I'm more likely to wear. So I'm gonna add that in. This is one of my favorite types of colors to wear in my crease. It's like a little bit of a rosy taupe. Uh, they call this a taupe with a matte finish, but it, you can see in the picture it definitely has a rosiness to it. And that is just my favorite color to start out so many looks. I start out colorful looks with that shade. I use it to start out a neutral look. Like, it's just, I think that one just, it just makes sense in my palette. It's like those TikToks, like things that just make sense. That color makes sense in my palette. Calcination also looks pretty. That's similar to Archetype, but just like a little bit less rosy and more of just like, I say it's a, a beige with pink undertones. That one looks pretty too. I think I'm still gonna go with Archetype though. Like, I just like that slightly more rosiness. I'm kind of feeling drawn to green right now. I really like green eyeshadow. I feel like I don't have a whole lot of it in my collection um, outside of like my Elf Earth and Ocean palette, but I don't really have a whole lot of green. And this green looks really pretty. I like how just like, it's just a straight green. Like it's kind of like a grass sort of green color. It's not too olivey. It's not too lime green either. It's just like a solid green. I really like it. I'm gonna put it in. That's, I don't know. That, that looks like a fun color. Daybreak is pretty. I also feel like my collection is a little bit lacking in yellows and I do really like yellow eyeshadow. I think it is great in the fall, but also in the spring and summer too. Like it's just a good bright color. Uh, it's fun to work with. So I I, I would like to add a matte yellow, and this one looks perfect. It kind of reminds me of one I used to have from ColourPop. I don't know what happened to it, but I don't have it anymore. This looks like a great, great yellow. Not too neon. I have some really bright yellows in Clarity singles, but none quite like this, I don't think. Ooh, Defiance looks pretty. Intense Copper. This is one that looks pretty in the pan, but I do feel like sometimes like really orangey coppers like this can kind of make me look sick. They just don't quite work on my skin tone, but that does look really pretty. Euphoria. This is, okay, see, this is the kind of like deep, almost reddish. See, this this for me is a little bit more flattering, I think, on my eyes than a more orangey copper. It's like, it's got a little bit of a mauve to it, which you know I love. I think mauve is so flattering on any eye color. But this is like a deep wine sort of mauve. And I don't know, it's not the kind of color I would normally think of as like a me color, but I feel like if I had this color in this palette, I would love it. Like, I just have a feeling. So let's add that one in. And Habitat, this also looks like a really nice green. They describe that as a moss green with a matte finish. I wonder, I'm not necessarily gonna get it, but I'm looking to compare it to this one. It's a little bit more toned down. I wonder how olivey this is. 
Ooh, okay. In this picture, it looks very olivey in the swatches. So I do find that very olivey greens just aren't usually very flattering on my skin tone. So I, I'll go ahead and get rid of that one. I think I think this one looks just bright enough, but like not too, not too colorful at the same time. This looks like a nice deeper mauve to complement the lighter mauve and like that more wine red shimmer imago this could be kind of like the deepening up shade in the palette i'm thinking like it's almost like a reddish brown and i don't want to have i don't want to have a brown in this palette because i brown just isn't my favorite color to wear on my eyes weirdly enough like it's a nice color sometimes but i prefer i prefer a mauve or like something with like a rosy twist to it versus just like a straight brown and I feel like this would be the perfect like neutral-ish deepening shade and it doesn't look incredibly deep but just deep enough for me I think. This I'm gonna play around with the order of this and yeah this is not necessarily the order it's gonna be in because this is way too random looking for me right now but I'm gonna rearrange them. Litha Fight looks pretty too. This reminds me of the shade Dusty Rose in Soft Glam. But um, I already have I already have so many of these, whereas I feel like I don't quite have as many like quite like this one here. This is almost like a Marsala. Um, I yeah I just really like that. So I yeah I think I'll pass on Lithophyte. Outrun looks really pretty too. They call it sky blue. It almost looks a little bit like like a slightly deeper sky blue, which is really pretty. But I do feel like I'd probably wear the periwinkle more than I would wear this blue. Um, so yeah, let's, let's pass on that one. So one shade I do want to have in here is an inner corner highlight, but I want it to be something special. Um, this one's called Ivory with Silver Highlights and a Metallic Finish. That sounds like a little bit too, like something I already have in so many other palettes. Ooh, Void is really pretty too. This is a spring green with a matte finish. It's almost like a lighter version of Coven. Maybe I should get that. I don't know. Let's leave them both in for now and they'll figure it out. <laughs> okay, so I think now that I've kind of taken you through like my thought process, what I'm envisioning, um, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the, um, the next like few minutes of this footage so that then I can jump to what I ended up actually creating and show you how I arranged it and everything. Okay guys, so I think we have the palette. Oh my gosh, I love how it turned out. So I ended up picking the shade Celestial for my inner corner highlight shade. This, this is described as an iridescent white with green reflections and a pearlescent finish. And that sounds like it's gonna complement so many of these shades really well. Like it'll totally work with the two multi-chromes. It'll work with the green and yellow. Um, it'll work with any kind of more neutral look too, but it's just like something a little bit different than just your standard like pearly ivory sort of color. And then these are the two multi-chromes I picked, Genesis and Parsec. Altitude, the pastel periwinkle. I really like how that color fits in to this palette and especially with this top row, I think it's gonna be really fun in like the winter for like a frosty look or um, in the spring for like a pastel sort of look. And then this next row is kind of like, actually I think I'm gonna swap the green and the yellow with each other. This next row, because now we're kind of looking at it in rows, and I'm also kind of looking at it in quads too, like the bottom corner, but this next row is almost like a summer sort of row. We have the yellow, which definitely makes me think of summer, sunshine, that's what that color makes me think of. Then we have, I ended up picking out this coral shade called Backdraft. This just looks like a stunning like coral to gold shifty shade. They call it a fiery peach with golden highlights. Then we have, this is kind of like my basic transition color archetype. We saw that. And then this really fun like Marsala wine metallic. It just, that shade just looks so rich and bold to me and I love it. Then this shade I ended up kind of going with towards the end. This is another kind of basic shade but it just looks like a great everyday taupe that's not too bronzy, not too orangey. It looks like it would make a great one and done shade. It'll go well with some of these fall tones, but it'll really work any time of year. So yeah, I kind of just wanted that shade in there too to go along with 
the rose gold so that I could have two kind of like everyday shimmers. And then I have this green. I ended up going with the slightly more medium toned green rather than the lighter one because I just, I thought this looked like such an interesting shade that I still, even though it is somewhat colorful, I don't feel intimidated by it either. Actually, I think I want to switch this Marsala with the rose gold too because I kind of want the bottom row to be the deeper row. Actually, mm, I don't know. I'll, I'll probably rearrange it once I get it anyway. The shades are going to come separate from the palette. Like I'll put the shades in myself when it physically arrives. So I um, don't need to worry too much about how it's arranged right now, but yeah, we'll see. But we have the rose gold acolyte and finally this matte mauve, this matte reddish mauve called Imigo. Yeah, I'm really, really, really excited to get my hands on this and I will come back when I have it physically in my hands. All right, so here I am with the palette here in person. I've actually had it for a couple of weeks now. I've been playing around with it, testing it out so that I could come and share my thoughts with you. So here's what the outside looks like. So that's the front. In the back, it does have these little holes where you can poke the pans out if you wanted to rearrange them or if you wanted to you know, swap one out for a different shade. So that is the outside and drum roll please. Here is what the inside looks like. I am so, so happy with how it looks in person. I feel like it is even more beautiful than I expected. It does have a mirror on the inside as well, and it says, don't be afraid to color outside the lines, which is a cute little touch. So first, let me go ahead and show you some close-ups and some swatches of these shades. So as you can see, all of the shades swatch really nicely. The only one that I found a little bit sheer is the shade Altitude, that periwinkle. It is definitely a pastel. As far as the textures of these, the mattes, they are a little bit powdery. I do get a little bit of like kickback when I dip my brush into them. I don't personally mind that uh, because to me, that usually is a sign that they're very blendable and I do find these mattes all very blendable, very workable. They don't get patchy on my eyes. So then here up top, we also have the two multi-chromes that I chose, but I think these two shades are stunning. This one right here, the shade Genesis, is a lot brighter in person than what I was expecting. It does have a very like aqua blue base to it. You can especially tell like in the pan when I sort of tilt it backwards, you can see it has a, quite a bit of a turquoise sort of base to it. I mean, you already saw the swatches. Once they're swatched out and sheared out though, that aqua turquoise color in Genesis isn't quite as noticeable. But just looking at the pictures online, I was expecting it to be a little bit more of like a baby blue base, and it does have quite a bit of like turquoise to it. It's funny, both of these multi-chromes that I chose actually remind me a lot of two of the shades in my Clarity Cosmetics Somer Amazing palette. But I do want to say I actually kind of like the texture of these a little bit better than Clarity. Clarity shimmers are very kind of flaky, and so you have to be kind of careful with them. These, I, I just find them a little bit easier to work with. And then this shimmer down here, I also wanted to point out, this is the shade Backdraft. This shade, I also feel like it has a lot more of like, almost like a hot pink coral base to it. And on the website, it just looked a little bit more muted, a little bit of like a lighter peachy coral. I don't necessarily mind because I think this color is beautiful too, but I definitely was like, I was envisioning a little bit more of a muted, like toned down color story. And in person, the color story ended up being a lot more just like bright. Just with really with those three shades, um, the two multi-chromes, Parsec and Genesis, and then Backdraft here, those three all 
at least in the pans, they do, they're a little bit louder than I was anticipating, but I, I don't really mind. I feel like it works. But the nice thing about this is if, let's say, I wanted to, you know, sometime in the future, replace one or two of these shades with different shades, I could just purchase one shade from their site, pop that one out, and replace it. And it could almost just be kind of like a constant work in progress, which I think is really cool. The other nice thing is if you are a panner, if you like to pan your eyeshadows, once you use up one of these shades, if you love it and you want to replace it, you can just purchase a replacement. You don't have to buy a whole new palette. So in the end, it just ends up being so much less wasteful. A couple other things I wanted to point out about Lethal that I really appreciate. They actually have a whole page on their website talking about their brand ethics, but not only are they cruelty-free and vegan, they're also carbon neutral, halal, and they only source their mica from child labor-free conditions, which is a big one that more brands need to be working on, but I'm really glad to see that Lethal actually cares about that issue. So just a really cool brand all around, and I'm just really excited to have finally been able to try them. Now I am just so, I, I wanna make more. Like I just wanna go on there and make a bunch of like mock-up palettes and maybe buy them, maybe not. That's the fun thing is you can actually save your palettes. So you could create as many custom palettes as you want. You don't have to actually order them, but you can save them on their website so that you can go back and reference them later. So I just, I think, this is just such a cool company and a great concept. But overall with this palette, I'm just, I'm so happy with how it all came together. I love just this mix of colors. I feel like it's perfect for me. And you know, I'm, I'm definitely gonna be getting a lot of use, especially out of like these bottom two rows in the fall. I already have been using them a ton. I also, I love this quad down here. There's just so many possibilities with this palette. I'm, I'm so excited to keep playing with it. Let's go ahead and hop into look number one, which is a very fall look. And then obviously today's look is not very fall at all, but it's still <laughs> really fun. This is probably more the kind of look I'd wear in like the spring and summer, but I did want to feature some of those more like colorful shades as well. So let's hop into look number one now. All right, so for look number one, I started out with the shade Daybreak, this matte yellow in my crease, and I'm going for a very fall look. So I just buffed that into the crease with a nice fluffy brush. Then I went into the deepest matte shade called Imigo, this nice matte like Marsala color, and I packed that into the outer corner. Then I went back to the fluffy brush and just did a little bit of blending just to kind of mesh those two shades together. And then I went in with the shade Lithium, this metallic taupe shade, and I just packed that all over my lid with my finger. Then I did a little bit more blending. And finally, I went into the rose gold shade Acolyte with just my pinky finger and I tapped that into the inner corner and kind of pulled it up onto the inner part of my lid as well. Then finally, I took a mix of Imigo and Acolyte, the two matte mauves, and used that to define my lower lash line, just kind of smudged it all the way across. I ended up finishing off the look with some brown liner, mascara, and a nice warm nude lip. This is the Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in Liar. And I love how this look turned out. I love how the yellow just adds some nice toasty warmth to the look. All right, getting into look number two, this is the look that I've been wearing throughout this whole video. I started out with the matte periwinkle called Altitude and just buffed that into my crease with a nice fluffy brush. This is a pastel shade. It's a little bit sheer, more sheer than the other mattes, but I found that I was able to build it up to a really good intensity. I think I built up like two to three layers on each side and I was happy with the color payoff. Then I dipped into the green coven and packed that into my outer corner. Again, the shade a little bit sheer, but very buildable. I feel like these mattes, even though they don't necessarily go on like full pigment right away, I I find them very easy to work with and they're they build on themselves really nicely without getting patchy or you know blending away or anything. Then I dipped into the shade Genesis, this beautiful like unicorn color I like to call it, and I just tapped that pretty much in the center of the lid and I even overlapped it with the green. I really like how this just totally transformed that green color. I can tell I'm gonna get a lot of use out of this shade. Then I dipped into the other multi-chrome. This is the shade Parsec, this kind of pinkish goldish green color. That's the shade that I applied into the inner third of my lid and I did overlap it slightly with Genesis. 
And I just love the dimension that these two multi-chromes created on my lids. I felt like I just had like the most beautiful holographic color just twinkling on my lids. Went back in with my crease brush, just blended a little bit more. And then I took the shade Celestial, this really light green color and applied that to my inner corner. This shade is very brightening to the inner corner. I really like that the green is subtle. It doesn't look like, whoa, that's super minty green. It's just like a white with a green kind of shift to it. And I did pull that into kind of the inner part of my crease as well. Then I took a little bit more of the matte green and smudged that across my lower lash line. I decided to use a nice royal blue liner on the top. This is the Urban Decay Eye Pencil in Roxy. I drew it across my lash line and then I took a flat liner brush from e.l.f. and just kind of winged it out ever so slightly. Then on my lips, I used a combination of the Koki Lip Liner in Dusty Rose and a just a clear gloss from Bite. This is the Yay Sayer Gloss in Sugar Drizzle. And that is the finished look. I love this look. This is a perfect spring look to me. So those are kind of my initial thoughts and initial review on my custom Lethal Cosmetics palette. So far, I am really, really happy with it. I definitely see where all the hype comes from with this brand. And again, that 20% off discount code is Sarah Rose. Yeah, that should get you a good chunk of change off. And I also did want to mention that shipping is $8.99. They are based in Germany and they also have a three-day express shipping option. But I think that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Lethal for sending me this beautiful palette and introducing me to your awesome brand. I can't wait to create more custom palettes of my own. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.